The Marrow Thieves was one of those things that happened and you can't predict it, and I didn't. And I had no idea what was going to happen. The awards, Canada Reads, um, now we're at 100 weeks, uh, number one on the bestsellers list for CBC. Um, it was just, it's become a, a phenomenon and, and uh, there was a lot of pressure. I'm Cherie Demoline. I'm the author of The Marrow Thieves and Empire of Wild. Empire of Wild is the story of a woman named Joan whose husband has gone missing and she searches frantically for him for over a year uh, and then she finds him, except that she finds him uh, in a Walmart parking lot in an evangelical missionary tent and he's going by the name the Reverend Wolf and he has no memory of her or even of himself and Joan starts to suspect that the Rougarou might be involved. The Rougarou is a creature from Métis communities who haunts the roads. Empire of Wild is different from the Marrow Thieves in a lot of ways, and in a lot of ways it's similar. They're both based on the stories that I grew up with, the people in my community, the ways that we live and think uh, about the world and about our place in it. Um, but Empire of Wild really was a chance to talk about Indigenous love, specifically about women, women with agency and autonomy and who own themselves and have you know healthy sex lives and who are just living joy. It's about uh, you know the weight uh, of being an Indigenous woman and that weight, the heaviest weight that we carry is is so much abundant love. And so it really was an opportunity to talk about that that beautiful brokenness. To, we, you know, we I talk about community and I talk about you know political issues, resource extraction, but really it the, at the at its core, it's a traditional story, and it is the story of love. When I'm writing YA. Uh, as opposed to adult fiction. The only real difference is this. With YA, you write the way that young people live, which is heart first, complete action. Everything is the best day or the worst day. Uh, it's very emotionally driven. And writing for adults, you take a little bit more of a complex view. So you, you know, your characters philosophize a bit more. You can talk about some bigger issues up front. So I don't really change the language. You know, I don't change the levels. Kids are brilliant. I don't need to sort of dumb anything down or make it simpler. It's just about the emotional tone and also the sex. I get to talk about sex in adult books. The advice that I would give to emerging writers, especially from black, indigenous, and you know, other people of color communities is stay true to your voice. We desperately need your voice. We desperately need your stories. The best thing you can do is keep reading uh, diverse voices. Just read voraciously, read everything. Do the work, sit down and, and get it done. Um, and then find a community of storytellers and writers and people who just love you so they can hold you up in those times when it gets a little tiring with the work. Being an Indigenous writer is an absolute gift. In my community, storytellers are considered leaders, so it's a position with a lot of responsibility. It's a blessing because I get to spend time with so many storytellers and their stories, and I, and I get to do that globally now and represent my specific community and my specific story. At the same time, it's really exhausting because you know I get on stage um, or do a presentation and I'm answering questions about the Indian Act and about residential schools and about genocide, whereas writers who are maybe not from marginalized communities just get to talk about plot and character and I'm always very envious of the ease and energy that they have after events. But again, at the same time, Ah, I just wouldn't have it any other way. I don't think I could have it any other way. <laughs>